Chad, you ready? Okay. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, my own nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Also, before we start, I'd like to have a moment of silence for two old friends of the town of Littleton, Don Sargent and Bert Ingerson. Uh, Bert was a three-term selectman. I don't think Don was ever selectman, but I think he held every other post in town. So if we could have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the town manager's report. Okay. Uh, first up is just an overview of something that we've briefly discussed before, which is economic development in the town developing a public-private partnership and working with, potentially working with Buxton Group to handle some of the commercial and retail uh, retention and recruitment. Um, so I, I put a little bit of report, I'll just read some of it. Uh, previously described, um, we're trying to develop public-private partnership to provide a more planned and aggressive approach to recruiting and retaining commercial development on Meadow Street and provide analytic support to strengthen Main Street businesses. Uh, Littleton has a successful history of effectively utilizing public-private partnerships um, into, and has had effective economic uh, partnerships with groups like LIDC. In order for us to do uh, the same thing with commercial development <coughs> potential on Meadow Street and Main Street, we need to look at uh, partnering with a, another group. The group is uh, Buxton uh, Company. Um, and we've talked about this uh, a good bit. What I'm trying to do right now is raise funds, non-tax dollars, to help support the project. Um, anything that I don't raise in donations, I will be um, seeking in the 2019 budget. Um, and I, what I would like to do is be able to get a motion from the board um, saying that you support the pursuance of the, this kind of a method uh, with Buxton to um, do some commercial uh, economic development for Meadow Street and Main Street. So, so we, questions? we need a board motion. We, we won't act on it until we get into board action in the event there is some public input during the public input session. But now uh, we can ask Andrew questions or discuss it ourselves. Mm -hmm. If you have questions or discussion, as Andrew said, uh, he's raised some money as some committed. Yep. It's 50000 a year for three years. I know of another ask Actually, I know of a couple other asks that he has made. I don't believe he's received commitments yet. Um, the heart of it is um, whatever he doesn't raise, he's going to ask for in the budget, which we will, the town will vote on in March. Um, he basically wants our blessing to pursue the project. I was uh, I was involved with that with the uh, presentation. I, I attended the presentation when they came in, in, uh, into town, and uh, I can tell you I, I fully support this. I, I hopefully we can get it funded uh, as much as we can without tax dollars. But even with tax dollars, I think it will pay back uh, uh, significant benefits. Um, I was very impressed, and I think that every um, Every uh, business and in turn resident will ben would benefit from something like this. So I don't, I don't know where I, we certainly aren't talking about a budget right now, but uh, I can tell you that from where we stand right now in terms of trying to raise uh, private funds to, to fund as much of it as possible, if not all of it, um, I absolutely support this whole thing. Would you care to make a motion for us to consider? We're going to do it now or in board action? Well, why don't we wait till we have public input, if there is any, it, it may affect our motion. Okay. Um, you have any 
comment? Talk? No, you've had a lot of um, positive feedback, though, from those that you have talked to in the private sector. That's right. Yeah, everybody from you know Main Street Inc. Um, the uh, Brian Ward, who's been really you know involved in economic development with the town for a long time. Um, also, um, Meadow Street uh, property owners, mm -hmm. um, and also the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I know that Nathan Carroll has said that you know he'd like to issue a letter of support for the fact that we're doing this because you know it really uh, helps the resiliency of the Main Street businesses through some of the uh, the, the tools that are out there, and um, it'll really help the the property on on, on uh, Meadow Street to creative mix of businesses that are going to are going to be more of a supporter than a detractor of, of Main Street. Um, you know, a lot of municipalities, I'm not sure if I've talked about it in the public enough, but a lot of municipalities will have an economic development mm -hmm. uh, staff person who provides uh, some of these professional services. And uh, Littleton has a, has a strong history of, you know, working on these public-private partnerships so that um, we let the market do what they do best and we let the government do what it does best. So, um, you know, this is a, a really, I think, strong bang for our buck. It gets us tools, it gets us expertise, and it gets us continuity where um, if we were to bring a staff person on, we'd be looking at, you know, at least double the cost uh, of what this does. And we wouldn't have access to the expensive tools that they have uh, or the, the continuity of having, you know, a team that's always uh, working on our behalf versus, you know, if you have staff turnover, you lose all the relationships that are built. So, um, uh, well, one thought is if it's, if it's approved and if the money is raised and they, they in fact, are higher, is it not going to take a lot of your time to manage it? If if you were to bring it in house, you mean, or no. oh no, if we're to no. do it as proposed. No, so doing doing it as proposed would actually take a lot off my plate. Um, I've been working with some developers and with different um, franchises to come into town, um, and it, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of uh, time and, and and a lot of uh, uh, you know closed doors until you find the right person to talk to. And you know, I don't have the tools. I'm not, I might not be, you know, recruiting the, the, the best business that's the best fit for whatever location there is. And uh, you know, I'm probably actually not that effective at it. When you outsource well, it, I think you you take a lot of that off the plate of my office, and you're putting it into the hands of people who really know what they're doing. So. Yeah, I, I know it's it's a ton of work. Uh, years and years ago. Um, Stan Filling and I were involved in bringing what is now FedEx here. Mm -hmm. and, and that started with a phone call from a realtor in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> who said, I represent a company that wants to locate at the intersection of 91 and 93. And I said, who is it? And he said, I can't tell you. <laughs> i give you an idea how it went. Two years later, we broke ground. Wow. What? Yeah. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we don't have any more comments ourselves, let's uh, put it on hold till we get to board action. Yeah. The only thing I'd be concerned, well, not really concerned about, but you know, Paul's sitting here, and I think sometimes when we bring certain businesses into town, what is the impact on our fire services, our mm -hmm. police um, force, and and some probably greater than others. So I would hope that we work very closely um, with those services. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. Uh, we don't have impact fees in town, except for, I think maybe with sewer connections, <coughs> there's some. But um, with this, working with a group like this, it really enables you to uh, you know, have laser focus and target specific uh, entities that you are, are proven to be good community partners, so. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. We'll get back okay. to this. Um, next up, we have a parking commission membership. Okay, you're slipping into old business, so that's good. You're still. So, sorry, uh, I haven't had a word. Can we do some yeah. citizens' concerns? I have another appointment. I'd like to speak for a moment. If I go, I'll be gone. If um, that'd be all right. Well. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I live in Saranac Street where the construction is going on, and I'd like to see some dust control. Why they can't put some calcium chloride down on that dirt patch on the road? Why they can't sweep the debris off the paved portions in the dust? 
Yeah, that's come up. We do a weekly construction meeting, and uh, that came up at our last one. If you're not seeing a difference with it, we can let them know again that they need to I haven't seen any difference at all. I haven't seen them trying to do a thing. Okay. I spoke to the superintendent of the highway department, and I haven't seen anything done at all. Yep. Particularly over the weekend, it was you know a lot of traffic down that street now. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I'll make sure that that gets over to them, and we'll put that on a requirement for them. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I did kind of jump a little bit there. Um, all right. The next part we have is allocation of matching grant funds for the parking study. And I'm not sure that's the exact right verbiage, but um, basically the, we're working with the North Country Council and the North Country Council has been able to secure and get approved through their grant from Federal Highway, uh, um, an amount allocated to do a parking study in Littleton. It's roughly 17,000. Six hundred dollars, I believe. Seven hundred seventeen, seventeen thousand seven hundred eighteen dollars for the total cost of the project. Uh, Littleton would be uh, contributing about ten percent of that. Um, we have the funds available, um, but I'd just be looking for a motion to um, allocate some funds from another line item uh, for that purpose. We we can do that after public comment, also, um, unless we have some comment now ourselves. And um, Alex is here. He's actually the lead uh, planner for the this project. I don't know. If, yep. Would you mind if he speaks to it just a little bit? Um, not at all. Okay. But, sure. Um, so yeah, Andrew put up the uh, parking area that we're looking at, the demolition area. This is uh, agreed to with the parking commission as far as the scope of the study in the greater downtown area. Um, basically a two-part project doing a study of parking, which is, includes an inventory of all the available parking in the study area and doing counts of uh, occupancy uh, of those different parking areas, both parking lots off street and uh, on street parking. Um, that study plus um, a public engagement process would then inform a uh, plan, which the parking commission is tasked with doing um, and would inform recommendations and strategies for addressing parking related issues in the town. If, if you in the television audience recall this study and this committee and so forth is a result of the selectmen's efforts to uh, stop the screaming match that was going on here. <laughs> so progress. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like, I was just planning to come to answer your questions, but I couldn't stay through the public comment period if there are questions. That would be helpful in case. Yeah. Yeah. We can't answer. Sure. Okay. Um, I'll just put this back up while I go through some of the other items. <clears throat> so, um, other items in the uh, town manager report the uh, master plan project bid timeline. Uh, last week, the planning board interviewed uh, two firms that have submitted their, uh, their proposals for the master plan update. Um, they plan to take action on it, I believe, uh, this week or next week. So we'll know more about that. Next week, the next planning board meeting next week. Next week, so. And then we'll be awarding the contract. Um, Mill Street pedestrian plan. Uh, we talked previously about how we were trying to have a temporary pedestrian plan through there without the center blocks. Uh, we, we have a number of donations. Um, $500 from Jim Alden, $500 from Doug Frizzell, and $500 from Shillings, and now $500 from Franco Rossi, thank you, uh, to help cover the costs of some of the uh, temporary pedestrian um, improvements we have out there. We have now flower boxes, and uh, there's going to be you know, flowers and everything put in there to help keep pedestrians on that side of the street. Uh, we still have the long-term plan that we're working on through the TAP project, so we'll be working on that. And the good thing about these planters is we can deploy them other parts of town once we have the uh, permanent fix-in on Mill Street for, uh, for the pedestrian areas. Um, this, there was, there's going to be a statewide economic plan for the North Country meeting coming up. There was, it was going to be on the 15th, but uh, they're, they're getting a number of the towns together to reschedule that. They haven't given me a date yet, but we'll have that soon. Um, I submitted a, a list of economic uh, contacts for them to consider and uh, places for them to consider doing it. So. I got a question about that. Yeah. 
what is a statewide economic plan for the North Country? Well, so, get so they're doing they're they're breaking it up into different uh, regions to get input. They they're doing an online. Uh, well, so you you log in online and you can sign up to be interviewed by the consulting firm, and then from there they're taking all that input. They're going to hold these public uh, listening sessions throughout the state. They chose Littleton for this region, and so really. It's probably not worded the best. It's a statewide plan, but they're having a, a region. Gotcha. Plan. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, Saranac and Amanusik Street, uh, that's coming along. Um, they're giving us an updated schedule. They, they say that everything's going to happen and be, be completed uh, when the substantial completion was set uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, we've had a couple of challenges that we've run into, but we're pushing through, uh, pushing through them. So. That project's coming along nicely. What we'll, we'll end up with is the landscaping and the final coat of pavement will actually be done in 2019, uh, just because the the uh, schedule is not going to allow us to get that far <coughs> this year. So, uh, sub five, um, as you know, we had a bit of an issue getting our permit, but I think with the DOT to work in the right of way and to work and in, connect things into their storm drain system, we've made some changes to the project, and that's going to be moving forward. Um, Right now, we're working on a couple of alternative scope measures just to make sure the project can uh, happen within the budget. Because as you know, the bids came in about half a million dollars higher than we had expected. So we're looking at different alternatives, how to break out certain streets. So uh, the TAP project that continues to be in engineering, um, I don't have a, any real update for that yet. Um, right now, we're working on an EMS feasibility study. Uh, we have a RFP that's nearly complete, and we're gonna. What we're basically gonna do is put EMS uh, out to be studied by an independent third party to tell us, you know, make a recommendation of what the best way to go is for our community. So, uh, that's basically what I have for the report today. Um, I'm going to ready for the old business. Uh, we slide right into old business. So in old business, we've had the uh, Littleton Parking uh, Commission changes. Um, we found that a couple of the members that were originally uh, recommended aren't able to fit it into their schedule, but we'd like to retain them as alternates. So we would be requesting that uh, first that uh, Nathan Carroll couldn't fit it into his schedule, so he has submitted a letter of rec resignation and like the board to accept that, and then changing Wayne Morello and Tony Alacqua to alternates. And uh, we already have a, a new member appointed from the last meeting, which is Chad Stearns, so. Okay, we'll bring that up and vote on it after a uh, public comment session. And then next up is the Conservation Commission. Just, uh, we've got a, a recommendation for a, a new member for a three-year alternate, and that's James Durante. Okay, we will also do that after uh, public comment section. Anything else in your report? Nothing else today. Okay, thank you. Uh, new business, I have nothing. Board of Assessors, I have nothing. We have now public comment section of the meeting. And a reminder uh, under the guidelines of how these meetings are conducted. Uh, public comment is meant to be on anything that was on today's agenda. <clears throat> Any other issues really should be addressed to the town manager or if they need to be brought before the select board, an appointment needs to be made in advance to do so. It's a, nothing new. It's just a reminder of the way we operate. So is there any public comment? Mr. Gelsey. Yes, uh, this is for the town manager. Do you please give me any input uh, what happened uh, when, uh, because I already heard from uh, the chairman, because I've been to the meeting in the open water light. But I never heard from you, not just me, I mean, you know, the taxpayer a little time, purely taxpayer a little time. What's your input, you know, on the money that you took from uh, the water light? I mean, we never heard anything. This isn't on today's agenda, Rudy. It's not for this agenda? No, it isn't. It's not on the agenda. Do you see it on today's agenda? 
Anything when, about water and light? And, and when the people are going to ask you that question, when you're calling, if you, you have call a, them on. if you have an issue with water and light, you should either bring it up with water no, and light or I make got, an appointment. I got, I got an issue with the town manager. With the town then manager. bring it up with the town manager, not at the selectman's meeting. Or if you think it has to come to a selectman's meeting, make an appointment to do so. How do you make an appointment? You said the email doesn't need doesn't even to your email. Do you know how to That's make it? Do you know how to make an appointment? Me? Yes. I don't know. Teach me. Contact Seal. And she'll give you the guidelines for making an appointment. This is nothing new, Rudy. I just asked him a simple question. And you as a chairman, and you as a chairman, you know, you make an issue on this table here. We know, you and I, we know, and other people from the commission, they know that the town manager, the day that they gave me the money, he was with you over there, and now they want to know why the town manager, give a basic answer. you know, doesn't come up with some kind, you know. The town manager has nothing to do with water and light. He was there when he asked for the money. He was dead. He was dead. I'm just $60,000. This is not on the agenda, Rudy. All right, I'm sorry, I apologize. Thank you. Is there any other input? Well, yeah. You better go. When did this change that we couldn't discuss anything that wasn't on the agenda? We've been doing that for years. Well, the last time we passed, the last two times we passed it out, it hasn't changed since actually Margate instituted it. Do we make exceptions from time to time? Yes. We made an exception tonight. That man sh should have been stopped. It wasn't on the agenda. But we've always basically kept the selectman meetings pretty much open to ask questions about it. Well, they've become the last two years. They begin. They begin. Begin to get unruly with topics that aren't appropriate. So we're enforcing the written and handed out and published rules for the way the meetings are conducted. Conducted. It's not new. We probably got ourselves in trouble. But it, it kind of by like taking that. exception to the rule. Yeah, it just sounds like right now you're just trying to keep the taxpayers out of your meetings. Blind. That's blind. blind. That's I'm not trying to. Really it sounds to me like you're trying to keep people blind. Mr. Chairman, by yeah. all of a sudden saying if it's not on One other time, agenda, please sit down. You can't, adjust, you can't talk about it. Because we have for years we've been talking about different subjects under the public input. It's always been open to open conversations. Do you, do you like all of a sudden we're trying to keep the taxpayers out of their business? Do you recall? It's been this way for three years. Do you recall the policy as it was published and handed out? It's been in effect since 2015. How long ago was that? 2015. 2015. Yeah. Back in 2015. I believe it was no, I don't late 2015. I haven't started any meetings. But it's been republished and handed out because it's been abused. Okay. I All think right. I think it's been rehanded out after each uh, town meeting period, so after the reorganization, yeah. right? We're not trying to keep anything from the public. We're trying to keep the meeting orderly and concise. I think <clears throat> I, I, I just I just I'm sorry, but I take it like you're you're saying we don't want to hear your comments anymore at these meetings. If you can't discuss what we're saying is happening, then you don't want to hear it. Well, let me. That's, it, it just sounds different to me that let me all go, of a sudden you're cutting. Let me go off. back. Let me go back and and say the original discussion was when we looked into the public comment and the unruly meeting. I mean, there were screaming matches here. We come to find out the public has every right in the world to attend a selectman's meeting. They do not have the right to speak. Period. We have the right to allow them to speak under our own terms and to stop the unruliness and the screaming matches and so forth. Those rules were instituted in 2015 when Margie was chair. They've been republished, reinstituted every March with the new selectman coming on board. 
we are guilty, we the select board, myself, mostly the chairman, of allowing people to get away with it. So all of a sudden now it seems like a big change. It isn't a big change. Okay, do I understand that? But it's it just, like this gentleman tonight, if he wanted to discuss dust on Sir, um, uh, Sir Max, you aware of this, he'd have had to uh, make an appointment with you to bring it to a Technically, well, in fact, that was on, that was on the agenda tonight. That was on the agenda tonight. I think the timing was off, but it, the, the Saranac Street discussion was on the agenda tonight. It was but, part of the town manager's but, report. But uh, can, can I can I add something here? I understand the frustration with the policy. I'm going to tell you that you know I've only been a selectman a year and a half now or so. When I first came on the board. Some of these, we, we, we were up here uh, having questions thrown at us for things we were, had no preparation whatsoever. People wanted answers and because we didn't have them available to us, we, we couldn't answer. We had, I'll get back to you. I'll get, how many times, I don't know how many times I heard I'll get back to you the first several selectmen's meetings that I sat on this side of the table on. And from our perspective, from my perspective, I'm gonna, I'll speak for myself personally, it's frustrating to not be prepared to deal with things that are, that are coming up. I, my impression is, I wasn't here in 15 uh, on the board, my impression is that's why it was instituted to begin with, so that we could, so that we had, we were prepared to discuss what people wanted to discuss. That's why we asked, they made appointments, so we knew what the subject matter was and we could be prepared to answer, or at least comment on questions. We were, t I, I went through several meetings completely unprepared for things that just, again, that, that were not on the agenda and and then people keep leaving angry, sometimes to put it mildly, because we didn't have an answer. And you just can't do it. Before we were getting the complaints that all, we, all I get is, we'll tell you next meeting, we'll get back to you on next meeting. People were complaining about that. If we don't, if we don't know what's on the agenda, we can't be prepared to address it. And that's my personal feeling. That's why I wasn't here when the when the policy was implemented. I, I hear you. I hear you. I know you get a policy, but as a taxpayer, it sounds to me like you're trying to shut taxpayers up. I'm sorry. That's the way. I feel. You know, and, and just from a, a management standpoint, a lot of the things that come up can actually just be dealt with on a day-to-day -day basis with the town office. Like for example, dust control. We have a we have a weekly construction meeting at Saranac Kamenusik, and you know if the gentleman calls, we can sit, we, he knows it because we actually send so, a notification. So you want he anybody show from now on to go through you before they come to the selection meeting? A lot of things can be taken care of before they come here. So all right, I, I'm I'm sorry. I, I agree with you. I know you have a policy. I agree with you. I know we've had some really tough discussions in the past, but this still sounds to me like all of a sudden because we haven't been doing this for years. All I disagree with that. I disagree with the that. This is the way it's been. That's how I feel. I think you're exaggerating. That's just my comment. Yeah. I think you're exaggerating a little bit. But you're right. I did let too many go. Yeah. And and I agree with Franco. I, the idea of making an appointment it isn't to make you go through hoops. It's so SEAL can warn us that something's going to come up. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have an answer instead of, I don't know, I have to get back to you. I think it makes a better selectman's meeting. For even for those that, that aren't here, for the, it, those that are watching on television. It's a meeting where the selectman's got all the control and the taxpayers have no ability. It's not a question of control, it's a question of knowledge. No, I agree. I, no, I know you have the policy, I hear what you're saying. It just, it sounds to me like <clears> it's just a, another shut up taxpayer we don't want to hear from you. If it was shut up taxpayer, you wouldn't be allowed to speak, period. Well, Which is you're legal. telling me now that you're, that you're right to shut us off and not let us speak, period. Legally, I'm telling you what the this RSA is a, says. This is a work okay, session. Fine. This okay. is considered a work session of the Board of Selectmen. It's not a necessarily a public, like it's not like town meeting or a or deliberative session. A, a select board meeting, if you look at the law, is a work session of this body to get its business done. 
they allow the public to have input before they take votes. No, no, no. Yeah. no you're wrong cur this. I'm curious, Ralph. Yeah, what you're you claiming that this is not, I don't know where the hell you're The selectman's is. meeting is not a public meeting. It, it, is a, allows it, to be. it is a public, it is a public but meeting the of their business meeting watch. legally. Listen. It's legally. You, you could, you, if you would like, you could call NHMA I, or I know what, I know what you and get the legal say, but as far as saying it's possible, but I'm sorry, yeah, maybe it sounds like you're trying to stuff the tax. I'm curious. Uh, if if that if the public comment were a, were a, a period by which you could make your comments, but you didn't expect answers for, would that be acceptable Over to you? Over the last three years, what we've heard from you guys is Andrew will look into it and get back to us. Right. Seal will look into it and get back to us. That's what you've been telling us for three years. Now all of a sudden you're saying you can't talk at all. But, no, but, but if we're, but if we're gonna look into it, if we're gonna, here's the point though, if we're gonna look into it, get back to you, why not just contact us first? So we don't, so we can answer the question at the at the meeting or or at a time. You but, wanted, but that aside, if you wanted the question, you want to be publicly. able to speak. I understand you want to be able to speak, and I, I, I the I last thing we will speak. Oh, when I have a comment, I want to speak with the camera sitting here, okay. not in his office one on one. Oh, all right, I, I want the taxpayers to hear what's going on when I talk. Okay, so let me stand. let me finish my thought. I'm sorry. Let me let me finish my thought. You want to be able to speak. You want to be able to speak in the meeting in public with the cameras on. I understand that, and I'm not, I'm not uh, advocating abridging that. Okay, we have a policy right now, whatever. I'm asking, a, I'm asking a question that I didn't get your response to. If that public comment period was a period of time for public comment, but not necessarily asking us a question and expecting an answer that night, is that? Does that meet your your uh, your 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 desire to be able to speak? Frank, my I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. Point of order. I'm just saying it has for three years. Well, no, for three years. Well, well, okay, that's where it hasn't satisfied you. I'm not only you particularly. It hasn't satisfied the group because every time we say we'll get back to you, we get uh, negative feedback. That no, we're not getting any answers. Right, I'm asking. I I'm asking you. I understand. I understand what you're doing. I understand you got these regulations. You go by these RSAs, but I'm sorry, it's still in my mind. It, and you're not going to change. That. I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm asking you a question. I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm asking you if that if that public comment period was set up as public comments and not necessarily expecting answers to questions. Is that acceptable? To, is would that be an acceptable approach to that? Yes. Okay, because that's all I was asking. This is my meeting to come to as a taxpayer yeah. to let you and the citizens know how I feel and what I feel yeah. about subjects. Yeah. I had no intention of talking tonight mm -hmm. until you told Rudy you can't, and that's never happened before. This is the first time that's I've ever true. heard the slight but they also they they can't no. talk because it's not on the agenda. That, that, that's the first time I've ever Well, heard. it's happened recently because I've, yeah. since I've been selected. Yeah. But, re but regardless, so yeah. I just want to be clear that if that public comment It's fine time, for me. That's, okay. that's All right. me but, but you just said, you just said a minute ago that you were here and you wanted to ask the questions so that the audience could hear the responses. Or the question, and hear what someone might. If you had an appointment and we knew what it was, they might be able to get the right. response. I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So from now on, I will bother Andrew for anything I want to talk about before I come to these meetings. We may be able to I'll help you. Yeah. Yep. We'll take your time away from you, <laughs> and then I'll finally come here and ask the same exact question. Yeah, but I, we, and we may be able to resolve your issue before we get here. Like, for example, uh, this gentleman may have sealed would get the question. The question might go right to the project engineer or the person in charge of public works. They may have an adequate response in a more timely manner than having to wait a month for the select board meeting during the summer. And a lot of issues are a lot of issues are day to day. Like I could answer Rudy's question in five seconds in my office or on the phone, very simply. I think that you know sometimes the things that come up here are, are the grandstand, and that's why you want to do it from the camera. But. It's, it's the it is grand because sometimes it's the only way you can let the public know it's like being in front of the TV. 
But why not get the truthful answer before you have to do it on the TV? But there, and there are also many other ways to let the public know. Unfortunately, they would be at your own expense. Okay. Radio, TV, newspaper. All right. I got the Is there any other public comment? Being none, let's deal with our four board actions. The first of which was to give our blessing to the Buxton Group Economic Development. I make a motion that we uh, support Andrew's uh, uh, attempts to uh, see what revenues he, what uh, contributions he can get from private business to try to build that public-private partnership. I'll second. Um, discussion. I had some discussion about the, the, the part of it to to ask for a balance in the town budget. Um, I don't think that's necessary now. I think when we get to town budget, we'll know a lot more about how successful or unsuccessful yeah. uh, Andrew's efforts have been, and we can address it there. So in less, if there are any other further discussion, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's uh, three to nothing. <clears throat> the allocation of the matching funds grant for the parking study that Andrew spoke about, is there a motion to allocate those funds? I'll make that motion. Second. Discussion. Where are the funds coming from? They're going to come from... Uh, under the executive office's budget, there's uh, number uh, 13, which is number 2-315, professional services and or grant match. And uh, I've got a grant match available for funds 2,000. Okay. So we'll shift that over to this. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to nothing. Um, number three was the parking commission change in appointments. We were having Mr. Alacqua and Mr. Morello move to alternates. Um, Chad Stern has already been voted a member, hasn't he? Yep. And accepting Nathan Curl's resignation. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to nothing. The last was the uh, alternate James Durant, or Durant T, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, uh, for a three year alternate appointment. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Three. Three to nothing. That is it for the public portion of the, of the agenda. We do have a non-public portion under RSA 91-A colon 3 comma Roman numeral 2 parentheses D. Consider the acquisition, sale, or lease of real personal property, which if discussed in public would likely benefit a party or party whose interests are adverse to those of the general community. Is there a motion to go into non-public session? i make that motion. Second. Um, please indicate your approval by roll call vote. Kerry Gendron, yay. Marco Rossi, aye. Skylar Sweet, aye. We're adjourned. Thanks, Alex. Yeah.